Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and I am here today with the last tutorial in our handmade holiday series for 2021. I will link to all the tutorials in this series down below. I have one convenient playlist for you. I hope you enjoyed the series. I have a great project for you today to wrap this up that I think um, not only are people on your gift list going to enjoy, but I think there's also a lot of room to improve this design. So please do feel free to customize this project and make it suit your needs perfectly. What we are going to be making today is like a little purse pal. It is not designed to carry independently. Um, it's actually designed just to hold your essentials and then move from bag to bag with you. And its size and the little wristlet strap make it very easy to get this in and out of your bags. And so it has two tall pockets which are designed to hold the phone. And again, you're welcome to increase the width or height of these pockets if you need something bigger to fit your phone. This fits my iPhone XR absolutely perfectly. And then in the small pocket, chapstick, tissues. I would even tuck an eyeglass cleaner in there um, for myself. And then in the opposite pocket, glasses. This is like my dream come true for purse accessories. And then along the front are two card slips. You could put your business cards in there, your to-do list, anything tiny for that matter that could also hold your chapstick. And then perhaps you could put your keys in the center or even attach your keys to the side. So this is a really super functional project that I'm happy to share with you today. I just wanna offer you up the pattern measurements quickly. You're going to need two cuts of cork, which measure 4.75 inches wide by 14 and a half inches long. You're also gonna need two pieces of quilt weight cotton, which are the same measurements. You're going to need one piece of cork, which is 4.75 inches wide by 10 inches long, and one like size piece of cotton for the shorter pocket. Then you're going to need two cuts of cork, which are four inches tall by three inches wide for these front card pockets. And you're going to need one piece of cork that's three by 15 for the strap. You have a, a little tiny tab here with the D ring on it and that measures a half an inch by three inches. I used a half an inch D ring, the little swivel fob that came with that and then the one inch split ring and a rivet here on the strap and then four rivets to connect these little compartments. If you do not have a rivet press, what I suggest you do is just make one of these little compartments. Um, you may, depending upon your machine, be able to fit this up on the deck and stitch them across the top. You may also be able to use heavy duty magnetic or um, traditional snaps to attach this. And then you also, last resort, have the option of hand stitching across the top there so that you can have all three compartments. Again, I think there's so much room to improve this design. I really love what I have in hand and I'm definitely keeping this for myself, but I look forward to seeing what you do with this and I wanna invite you to join the Sospire group Facebook page and please share your ideas related to this design and photos of your finished purse pals. So without further ado, shall we get started? So for this project, we're going to be creating two longer organizers, which will fit your cell phone, glasses, things like that. And then one shorter organizer and this gives you an idea of the sizes there. This longer one is approximately seven and a quarter inches by four inches when it's finished. 
and the shorter one is about five by four. So approximately a two inch height variation on these. Both sizes are crafted in the exact same way. So I'm just going to demo that process for you, but we're gonna do something a little different on the demo piece. We're going to attach some card slips to the front of that. So you have the option of attaching card slips to both if you like. I'm just going to attach the card slips on one. So what you will be working with here is a non-fraying material. Ideally, cork is the right weight for this project, but you may be able to get away with a faux leather as well. And then some pretty quilt weight cotton fabric for the lining. So you're going to have two of the longer cork pieces, which measure four, 0.75 inches wide by 14 and a half inches long and there'll be two of those you're also going to need two pieces of the quilt weight cotton same measurements for the lining as well the shorter pocket the cork and the cotton measure 4.75 inches wide by 10 inches long okay and the little card slots that I'm working with measure four by three, and those can be positioned horizontally or vertically. I think I am going to do a vertical orientation on this pocket because those proportions will be absolutely lovely. Then in addition, the um, other piece that you're going to need is the strap and that's going to be crafted from the cork as well and that's three by 15 and then you're going to need a little cork tab there that can be um, up to one inch wide by three inches long and this is going to be largely dependent upon the hardware that you're attaching the little ring to so this is going to get attached to this exterior piece and then that's going to allow you to clip the strap onto that so as this project comes together that will make more sense to you so the first thing that i want to do is get my little card pockets positioned on here and i'm going to come two inches down from one of the short edges and I'm just going to stagger those pockets right there so that I have two card slips on here. And I am going to stitch down the long sides and across the base to secure those. If you are worried about your card slipping down, stitch across the base of the first pocket first and that will keep your cards from slipping down in there. So just make sure you have that centered on there and then run a row of stitching across there about a half an inch up from the bottom. And so that's what that looks like there. And then you can layer the second card slip on there about a half an inch down from the top and you're going to stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance down the side sink your needle and pivot across the base of that and then up the opposite side and now i have two vertical card slips on the front of this little pouch so the next step in this process is for me to secure my little tab of which i am going to attach a small piece of hardware to so that i can later hook my little wristlet strap on i have a very small d-ring here so i'm going to need to trim my little tab piece up a bit here your hardware is going to vary as well so 
There's some flexibility here. I'm going to go ahead and trim my little tab up to a half an inch by three inches so that that fits nicely on this tiny D-ring. And then I'm going to go ahead and stitch across here to secure that on. And then this little D-ring is going to get positioned right above those card pockets and just hanging slightly off the edge of that. And I'm going to go ahead and tack that down. And that's what that looks like. Then I will be able to attach my wristlet strap to that. And the next step then is to take my like size piece of quilt weight cotton and I'm going to position that right sides facing on this strip and I'm only stitching across the top and the base of that. So the two short ends. And then I want to pick this up in the center of that cotton fabric and fold it over so I can align those seams that I just made. So now the cork is right sides facing and the cotton is right sides facing. And I'm going to go ahead and get a clip in there and just peek inside and make sure your seam is nice and straight and aligned. And so now the lining for the interior is right sides facing and the cork is right sides facing. Now I want to stitch down those long sides. I am going to leave a three inch opening on the cork to turn this around and it doesn't matter which side you want to leave that on. Just back stitch very well in between the opening, okay? So stitch down one long side and then on the opposite long side leave yourself three inches on the cork side to turn. Okay, so I've stitched down one long edge and then I've left myself a nice opening on the cork side to turn this right side out. And so I want to go ahead and squish up as much of that cork as I can and just work carefully so you don't rip out any stitches. If you happen to have a little wooden stuffing stick there, that's really nice to poke out those corners of that cork. And then you can also bring your lining out and poke out those corners if you like as well. The lining is ultimately going to get tucked back inside, but this is a great opportunity to make sure that there are no holes in that. I really love this fabric that I selected for the lining. It's beautiful. And so the lining is going to get fit inside of the cork pocket there. And again, this tool is super handy to push that lining down in there. And then the cork is going to create a little rim at the top and some of that lining is going to peek up, which I think is really pretty. And they all work out like that. So that is part of the plan. So go ahead and get your lining fit inside of there nice. And then the next step is to fold over that opening at the side and go ahead and top stitch down the sides of your case so that you can close up that opening and so you can secure your lining in that stitching. It doesn't have to be secured in there if you don't want but um, it is nice I think to keep it snug on the inside. The one caution I would offer you is just don't sew the lining in crooked. So make sure your lining is in there nice. And then go ahead and stitch along that side with a narrow quarter inch seam allowance. 
Okay, now I have another tall pocket with two vertical card slips on the front of that. You will repeat that process less the card slips to create your shorter pocket and one more tall pocket. Then what we want to do is create a little sandwich between all of these. And so if you have a rivet press, that is an awesome way to attach these. If you don't, you're going to need to use your sewing machine to join these. And so that is going to take a little patience and you're going to want to get your project clipped at the top and then you're going to need to fit that up on your machine deck and stitch across there. The rivet press is the ideal way to attach these. So that is what I am going to do. Okay, so I have my hole punch set up in my cam press and now I am punching holes in the rear side of the long pouches. I'm measuring in one inch from each side and putting a little hole in there. I like to mark my holes with the white gel pen because it shows up. So like the card slots are the front of this long pouch. I have poked holes in that top trim of each. It's kind of difficult to see. You'll be able to see better once I put the rivet in, but it's one inch in from each side. So there's a two inch gap between the holes and I have put holes on both sides of the short pouch. You can kind of see them up there. So now I need to thread my rivets through. So the short pouch is going to go in the center of this. So my rivet will get fed through that long pouch and then through the short pouch and then I can go ahead and cap that and once I get both of these in the side that will make more sense to you all and I can show you what that looks like. So now you can see where I have put those holes and how that's going to hold this together. Now I haven't pressed those down yet because I'm going to do that all at one time. I want to go ahead and attach the second long pouch there. So there are no card pockets on this one. So um, I'm just putting the side with the holes, which is the rear side along that short pocket. And if you're not familiar with rivets, there's a long post and then a short cap and they kind of fit together. But in order for them to be secure, you need to have the press so that you can press them together and lock the post with the cap. Okay, so now I have my three pieces together and you can see how that will allow this to expand. It's really cute and it's gonna be so functional. So the pockets are in the front. The tab to attach the strap to is on the side. There's a shallow pocket in the center and then the two longer pockets which are perfect for sunglasses and the phone flank that shorter pocket. So the next step for me is to go ahead and secure these rivets and so I need to change out my dies and then I'm just going to position each rivet up on the press there and secure that in place. And that's all there is to it. So the rivet press I think is the easiest way to do this. You may also have additional hardware that will work for you. I'm thinking those key fob clamps could be a good option. 
again you could stitch these pockets together you're just going to have to um, work very carefully and slowly to do that you may also consider using very heavy duty snaps for this project but I really like the functionality and how this kind of acts as an accordion for this so the next step is to craft the strap which is going to go on the side of this and so I suggest going with three inches wide by 15 inches long and the cork you're going to have to press and clip with your fingers so press it over evenly with your fingers and then clip it because you can't iron the cork and so we're just going to use the standard four ply strap so i have this prepped with all of the pieces coming into the center of this strap and so i'm just going to go ahead and stitch a row down each edge of that cork in the center to hold that all in place And so that's what that looks like there. And then I can go ahead and fold it over and stitch down that folded edge. Okay, so my swivel fob set that came with this particular D-ring has a very narrow opening. So I'm going to thread on a little key ring through that opening so that I have a bigger space to attach my strap to. So now my strap is going to get thread on that split ring and I'm going to stitch across there to get it secure and then I'm gonna turn it and install a rivet because that'll add a nice look. Okay, so I've run like four rows of stitching across here and I'm gonna go ahead and trim away that excess and then I'm going to turn that strap around so that raw edge is hidden on the inside and I'm going to go ahead and install one more rivet there to hold that in place and finish off the strap. I am really loving this press. I actually don't know how I got by so long without it. I highly recommend it. I have an unboxing video for this particular press. It's unlisted, but I'll link to it down in the notes if you want more information about this or you're thinking about it. Maybe it's not too late to ask for one for Christmas. So I just put all those layers up on there and I'm gonna press a hole right in the center. And so now I have my hole in there and I just need to put my rivet through and cap that. So I've put my rivet through there and I've capped that. And then I just have to trade out these dies here. And then I'll put this up on the press and secure that. And voila! I have a wonderful strap to attach and that looks really cute actually with that split ring on there. That strap sits beautifully inside of there. We may have come up with a new strap here. I love that look actually. Yay! This is so great. Um, sometimes when you improvise things work out better than you'd hoped. And this definitely is the case. I did not plan for that to look like that, and I love it. Okay, and then I can attach the strap right to this little purse pal here. And so the next thing for you to consider would be if 
in future makes you would like to add a flap closure to this this is not meant to be used as a wristlet so if you're worried about you know it dumping out this is really just meant so you can secure this little purse pal inside of your bag that's the purpose of the wristlet strap there so I hope that you like this project. I think it's really darling. I'm gonna get my phone and my glasses and load that up for you. Glasses go in the front pocket with the cards and my phone fits perfectly in the back pocket. If you have a larger phone, go ahead and just increase the width on these. And then like I have space in the middle, I'm always wishing I had a tissue with me. I could also put a chapstick in there. So that was a super fun sew. I want to thank you for joining me. This is actually the very last project in our holiday sewing series. I will not have a video for you on Friday because it's Christmas Eve and so I'll be celebrating with my family. I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I will have an end of the year video for you that will offer you a look back at 2021, the high points, and then a look forward to 2022. So please keep an eye out for that. And then in that video, I will be releasing the schedule for 2022 as well. So again, thank you so much for joining me and for making this handmade holiday series a success. I look forward to seeing you in the new year. And until then, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Merry Christmas, everyone.